conceptual grids of translation, exploring aspects of modern Greek literature translated into European languages. Every time that uh, history and politics of modern Greek translations to other European languages are discussed, we come across with more or less the same set of questions. What, how and when Italians, for example, Russians, French or Swedish translate from modern Greek? What kind of modern Greek literary texts intrigue translators and publishers in Denmark, for example, Portugal, Bulgaria or Poland? What kind of thematic, aesthetic, ideological preferences are depicted by their choices? How do translators, agents and publishers read and read modern Greek literature and through what channels? Are literary translations from modern Greek to the target language intervened by a third mediating language? What schemes are formed in these translation journeys from one European language to the others? There must be a network formed by central and powerful languages which work as a medium between modern Greek language and literature, a weak and peripheral one, with other equally weak and peripheral languages in Europe. Also, in a more historical perspective, one could look for periods of high European interest in modern Greek literature and culture, and consequently, of an increased number of translations. Moreover, what are the images, sets of ideas, identities of modern Greek literature and culture that attract the translator's interest? And certainly, since translation is not a mere transplantation from one language to another, but rather a procedure of translation, translators reading, imagining, creating, or even constructing what he or she translates, the motives of his or her reading must be figured out. In this wide range of agents, we should add some more general and complex factors, like the economic system and political status in which translators and their publishers work, and additionally, the book and publishing policy in general, and specifically, with regard to translations, the mechanisms of critical reception of literary translation, and last but not least, the reader's expectations to which a translation may or may not correspond. It is not only that we desperately want answers to these questions, but that we try to understand translation as a procedure and its driving mechanisms for translators and publishers their choices and policies as far as literary translations from modern Greek are concerned. In my presentation, I will try to map, up the map out the historical role played by the most decisive agents in translating modern Greek literature to other European languages during 19th and 20th centuries. I will make comments and bring out evidence derived from recordings and evaluations which result from a research program on literary translations from modern Greek held by the Center for the Greek Language. Then I will come to argue that the most crucial stage in the translation procedure is that of its reception by the readers, the critics and the scholars in the target language. I think that the notion of the conceptual greed coined in translation studies by André Lefebvre is an eloquent way to depict and understand translation's acceptance or rejection. I will conclude by slightly changing the terms of the discussion, or let me say, challenging the ground on which the questions are asked. Namely, to think of the translation as a third space of continuous negotiation between source and target language, as Michaela Wolf has suggested. 
But first, I would like to take a couple of minutes to present you briefly the research program on literary translations from modern Greek into European languages held by the Center for the Greek Language. The program has been carried out for the last 17 years. It was back in 1998 when we initiated it. The study for the literary translations from modern Greek to other languages had already made a short history until then. Data recording and classification began at the 1970s and sufficient data had been collected thenceforward in special publications, printed catalogues and appendices. However, a systematic classification of the collected data was necessary when we were ready to begin our project, and moreover, there was an urgent need to correct mistakenly copied data, update the 1990s transla translations recordings, complete past research by going further back to the first published translation catalogued in the libraries or archives, expand the research and recording to languages that had not yet been investigated, and finally, find a method to keep on updating recordings year by year since translation, like human history, does not end. Furthermore, the time was, has come for another step forward, to study what, how, when, and why translators choose to read from modern Greek and publishers to publish as well. There were, and of course still there are, certain images from modern Greek transferred to other European languages and cultures and depicted through translation. Our research program focused on these more cultural-like dimensions of translation as well as on recording data. After 10 years of research, a first phase of the project was completed in 2008, referring to literary translations into 24 European languages and resulted in an online database of translations recordings and a collection of studies on translations per target language, published in a volume by the end of 2012. It is the first time we have had such a wide spectrum available to study the history and politics of modern Greek literary translations throughout European languages. For the first time, for the time being, our project continues with recording, classification, and evaluation of modern Greek literature translated into another five European languages in which we didn't have the chance to expand our research before, Polish, Czech, Slovak, Hungarian, and Ladino or Judeo-Spanish, the language of the Jewish community in northern Greece, mainly in Thessaloniki. Later on, we are planning to encompass Georgian and Ukrainian languages. With the exception of the first sporadic translations, the history begins as soon as modern Greek becomes visible in the 19th century's context of Romanticism. The Greek nation was emerging while fighting for its independence from the Ottoman Empire and Europe, was pleased to recognize the newborn nation as a successor of the ancient Greece's illuminated past. It is indicative that the first translators of modern Greek literature in almost all European languages were scholars on ancient Greek, or at least they knew ancient Greek very well before they started looking upon modern Greek language and culture. At the same time, Romanticism was interested in the recent past of folk culture and focused on folk tales, songs, and legends. It was in this context that some of the first important translations from modern Greek appeared in European languages. For the first time in 1824, the French historian, philologist, and critic Claude Fauriel edited a collection of modern Greek folk songs which depicted the ideas, beliefs, and customs of modern Greek people. It is worth mentioning that French language became the predominant intermediate for modern Greek literary translations to other European languages during the 19th and 20th centuries. In the next year, that is 1825, English and Russian translations of modern Greek folk songs were released. During the 19th century, many translations of Greek folk songs appeared in other languages, like German, Italian, etc. 
In the turn of the 20th century and mostly in the post-war decades, while publishing was becoming a profitable and productive industry, the number of books in print increased and among them there was a large amount of translations. The nexus of translations becomes denser than ever in history. In addition to this economic reason that facilitated the increased number of translations, the interest in modern Greek was constantly supported by under and postgraduate courses and seminars on modern Greek studies in many institutions and universities all over Europe. Groups of students, language teachers, and university professors were becoming, most of the times unofficially, groups of practicing translation and, as a next stage, of writing or creating and publishing literary translations from modern Greek. Of course, their interest was more academic and served their need to study works of the modern Greek literary canon and didn't obey to the broader reading expectations of the general public. Their translations addressed a strictly confined group of specialized readers far away from bestseller books. However, their activities were keeping alive an interest in modern Greek literature and undoubtedly supported the cases of some well-known writers and poets to become deeply appreciated by the general public, like Kazantzakis and Kavafis. Historical and political interest in the 20th century Greece <coughs> should be considered as another basic motive of all the agents in the, in the literary field, readers and translators, literary critics and journalists. Greeks' resistance during the Nazi occupation, the following civil war, and most of all the dictatorship in late 1960s kept Greece on the top of the agenda. A lot of translations of essays, prose writings, and poetry with clear political views were published and read in German, French, and Scandinavian languages, just to name a few among other languages. Greek writers who were either living in Europe or were self-exiled moved to the head of the translation's interest. The prose writer Vasilis Vasilikos is one of these indicative cases. However, the political dimension was the, was the one side of the coin. There were also other more cultural aspects in the conceptualization of Greece by that time. The 1950s and 60s were the period during which the Greek novelist Kazantzakis is insistently translated into many European languages and more than any of his novels, Alexis Zorbas, was widely known as much as its main character, the famous Zorba the Greek. Once again, French language was the predominant intermediate for translating Kazantzakis' novels into other European languages. It seems that his writings corresponded to certain expectations since they were read as a raw depiction of the human spirit fighting against its own nature in a desperate agony to achieve the absolute freedom. A myth has been shaped, enforced by the Mediterranean light, sea and summer of the writers and his character's homeland. What translators were reading and repeatedly rereading in Kazantzakis' novels was also transferred, or should I say translated, into the well-known film Zorba the Greek, directed by Kakoyanis in 1964. The film, in its turn, caused more translations of Kazantzakis' novels and canonized the myth that even today remains at issue for tourists in the Greek islands of the Aegean Sea, though we should admit that the myth has gradually faded. Especially in the former Soviet Union and other countries of Eastern Europe, during the periods they were under the communist regime, translators and publishers as well were supervised by a central governmental bureau. No matter how austere the censorship may have been, cooperative translation practices were organized systematically in groups guided by well-experienced translators. One of their main purposes was to reconstitute through translation modern 
Greek literature as a whole autonomous entity and as such to be perceived by their readers. I think that this was the main reason for an impressive production of voluminous anthologies of translations with a wide range of selected writers, literary sounds and periods. In countries like Romania, where a lot of political refugees from the Greek Civil War were sheltered, there was an extra need for bilingual Greek-Romanian editions. But after the 1989 political and economic turn, the circumstances have changed dramatically. Nowadays, translation politics are very different in Europe. Young translators who have studied at university departments of translation studies have come on the stage with the efficiency of the professionals. As a result, more elaborated translations are published or are expected to appear in the near future. But what are we, we looking for in the contemporary modern Greek literary wo works today? What are the expectations that translators, publishers, and readers want to fulfill? I don't think I can answer this question. However, I would like to suggest one, of, one uh, answer as a starting point. It seems that a cosmopolitan or globalized reader is emerging, and he or she demands literary texts whose theme, fictional characters, ideas, and mentality remain local, but at the same time are able to be reduced to global dimensions. This ostensibly contradictory combination of local and global could help in order to move away from potential folklore readings of modern Greek literature. The next question seems unavoidable. If the modern Greek literary creation of the last two decades could respond worthily to that reading expectation. Instead of looking for an objective and absolute evaluation, focusing on a literary work and being able to define its translatability, I would choose to think of translation as a matter of correspondence between what we are or we think we are, our own identities, ideas and culture, as translators, agents, publishers, and readers in the target language, and what we conceive as familiar or unfamiliar from the source language, what we subconsciously reimagine or reconstruct of the other in the source language. What, how, and when Turks, for example, Spanish, English, or Slovenians translate from modern Greek has a direct or indirect correspondence to their own identity and culture, which fulfills certain historical, political, cultural, and other expectations. Every time we translate, we adjust our translation to a conceptual grid that is always at work in the target language. This grid is not a stable frame which helps us to perceive values and ideas. It is rather a ceaseless interplay between political, economic, cultural, textual, and other dimensions that they give content to it, and at the same time, they change it in a never-ending process. From that point of view, the question is simply not which is the best novel in contemporary modern Greek literature to choose and translate, or which poetical work could we recommend for translation? It is rather to what this translation will correspond in the target language, or what kind of reader's reactions it will cause, what thoughts, ideas, discussions it will activate in the target language. More than a linear procedure from the source to the target language, translation is the in-between place a third space of continuous negotiation between the self and the other, the native and the foreigner. I wonder if I could conclude my, by arguing that the best translation to be written, published and read, is that which can set in work these binary oppositions and thus legitimate translation in our world. Thank you. <laughs>